Hello everyone. The title of this video is Verifying that two functions are inverse functions. So each example I'm going to be doing in this video is taken directly from a free online textbook at openstacks.org and I'm in their Algebra and Trigonometry text section 3.7 titled Inverse Functions, and I'm working under the heading Verifying that two functions are inverse functions. Alright, so before I, I, have, I have examples written out, before I get into these examples, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what does it mean for two functions to be inverses? So before I get into those examples, let's get into, you know, what are inverse functions? Alright, so suppose we're given a one-to-one -one function, and this is key here. Uh, a function needs to be one-to-one -one in order to have an inverse function, right? an inverse that is also a function. And uh, you should know, I'm assuming you know what a one-to-one -one function is based on previous you know, lessons from earlier in this chapter, previous videos I've put up. So given a one-to-one -one function, say f there should be an inverse function there should be an what's called an inverse function f with a little minus 1 above it Okay, this little minus one notation is, you know, just means the inverse of f. Okay, inverse. Um, it does not mean, you know, f to the negative first power, even though I know it looks like that, but hopefully in the context of what you're talking about, if you're talking about functions, this little minus one notation means inverse. Now basically an inverse An inverse is just a reverse mapping, is the way I like to put it. For example, I had a very simple example to start. Say here I have a picture of, I'll do a little diagram of F, a little arrow diagram. So here's the domain of F, and here's going to be the range of F. And I'm going to set it up so that it's a one-to-one -one function. Right? Uh, if, if your function's not one-to-one, -one, then you don't have an inverse function. Okay, just keep that in mind. So I'll simply do this. So I'll say one, two, three is in the domain. And I'll just have, uh, you know, five, six, seven in the range, right? And I'll draw these arrows. So let's say let's say f f of one is five. All right. So let's say f of one is five, and f of two. Let's have f of two be seven. Why not? All right, just making this up. And f of three be six. So there's a little arrow diagram for a very, very basic one-to-one -one function called f. Right. So again, the inverse of this, right, the inverse of this just reverses it. Just reverses the arrows, reverses the mapping. So the function f inverse, I'll draw an arrow diagram for this, 
the domain of f inverse was the range of f. So on this box you got the 5, 6, and 7. And the range of f inverse was the domain of f. So in this box on the right is 1, 2, 3. And again, it just it just reverses the mapping. So if f of 1 was 5, then f inverse of 5 would be 1. And if f of 2 was 7, then f inverse of 7 would be 2. And it just takes you right back. And if f of 3 was 6, then f inverse of 6 would be 3. f inverse of 6 would be 3. Right. So again, just just reverses the mapping. And notice that, you know, since f was 1 to 1, you know, every output, every value in the in the range got mapped to only once. When you reverse it, you have a function. Right. That's why f needs to be 1 to 1. Cuz when you reverse it, you would also like the reversal to be a function. Right. And it is here. Okay, so that's a very simple way of putting it, but I like it, a reverse mapping. Now the title of this video right, is Verifying That Two Functions Are Inverses. Sorry, here it is. I didn't have it on screen. Verifying That Two Functions Are Inverses. Well, you're going to have to do that through composition. So let me put that up here. Okay, so in order to verify that two functions, say f and g, to verify that functions are inverses, you have to compose them in both orders, in both 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 orders. Right? You have to show that you know, f composed with f inverse of x equals just x, and the other way around as well. f inverse composed with f of x equals just x. This is one of those cases. This is one of those scenarios where the order in which you compose doesn't matter. Right? Normally it does, right? Normally when you compose two functions, if you switch the order of the functions, it'll change the expression entirely. But when those two functions are inverses, it doesn't matter what order they come in, you'll end up with just x as your final expression. So I'm going to put this in a box. Right, this is this is important. And again, I'm hoping this makes sense that when you compose two inverses, you just end up back where you started, right? Because because of the whole reverse mapping idea, right? If I take a, a value of x, run it through one function, it takes me to some output, and then run it through the inverse, it takes you right back. It reverses it. So that's why in both orders. You know, if two functions are truly inverses, when you compose them, they basically like undo one another, and you're left with the input you started with. You start, you end up right back where you started at, at whatever value of x you had. So like, let, let me just show you here. Right, going back to, say, my little picture here. What was f? Composed with you know what's f composed with f inverse of one, uh, not one of five. Uh, this should just be five. All right. Remember how this works? You do f of 
f inverse of 5. And then what was f inverse of 5? That was 1. And, so, and then I'm taking f of 1, which takes you right back to 5, right? So you see the value here is the same as I end up here, All right? Just like I wrote down here, right? The value inside here in the input is the one you, end, you, you just end right back there again after composing two inverses. And the other way around, same thing, you know, if I do f inverse, compose with f of, and then take a, take a value from the domain of f, say, 2, I should end up with 2 again. Well, let's see. What's f inverse of f of 2? Well, f of 2 is 7. So this is just f inverse of 7 and f inverse of 7. Oh, it takes you right back to 2 again, right? So the value you started with is the value you end with. Right, and that's going to happen whenever you compose two inverses. Right. Now, of course, that's as long as the value you're plugging in is in the domain of the first function, right? You remember how composition works, right? The, the value of x gets plugged into the first function, so it's got to be in the domain of that function. And if it is, and also in the range of the second function, that'll, that'll be where you end up with, you'll end up back where you started. Okay. All right, so now let's keep this in mind here, the, the composition rule, and go into our examples. Right. So we're asked here to you know, verify that the two functions are inverse functions. Use function composition to determine whether f and g are inverses. All right, so they're not calling them f and f inverse, because you, you don't know that they're inverses yet, or g and g inverse, right? You have to show that they're inverses. So the first order, let's take a look at f composed with g of x. Right? Now, if they're inverses, this should end up being just x. Right? You should end up where you started from. Well, let's see if that happens. All right, so it's going to be f of g of x. Right, remember how composition works. And what was g of x here? g of x is 1 over x minus 2. So this is f of 1 over x minus 2. All right, then I go into the rule for f and replace x with 1 over x minus 2. So instead of 1 over this x plus 2 here in the rule for f, it's 1 over, and I'm replacing x with this expression, right? 1 over x minus 2. Right? And then you have the plus 2 still. Well, let's see, that ends up being just 1 over, and then the minus 2 plus 2 go away, and then this is just 1 over x, and this ends up being just x. So check on that, great. All right. So it works in the one direction, all right, if I plug x into g and get g of x and then plug that back into f, it takes me right back to x. So, so f reverses g, but does g reverse f? All right, so we're seeing here that f reverses g. Now we have to ask the other way around. D does g reverse f, right? And if they reverse one another, then they are inverses. They would call them inverses. Right, so the second check on this is what's g composed with f at x. Now once again, if they are truly inverses, if g reverses f, uh, then we'll just end up with x again. Right? Input x, it goes through all this, and then you end up where you started, if they're inverses. All right, so this is g of f of x. So x goes into f, that was this 1 over x plus 2. So this is g of 1 over x plus 2. And now I go in to the rule for g and replace x in this rule for g with 1 over x plus 2. Right, so this is 1 over, and then this instead, right, 1 over x plus 2, and then you have minus 2. Well, 
1 over 1 over x plus 2 is just x plus 2. And then you have the minus 2 after, and x plus 2 minus 2 is x. Great. So x goes into f, you know, giving you whatever f of x is, and then that goes into g, and it takes you right back to x. So this tells me that g reverses f. So if they reverse each other, they are inverses. So f and g are inverses. And I'll put that in a little box. Right, we verified it with the composition. So we could say that you know g is f inverse, or you could say that f is g inverse. Right, with the little g g to g in the minus one. Great. And again, you can test it out with some numbers. You know, f of g of 1 should end up being 1. f of g of 5 should end up being 5. Right? Uh, g of f of 2 should end up being 2. g of f of 0 should end up being 0, and, and so on. As long as the value you're plugging in is in the domain of the first function, right? so if you're doing f composed with g, the value you plug in for x needs to be in the domain of g, so anything but 0. And if you do g composed with f, the value you plug in for x has to be anything but negative 2. All right. But they should undo one another. They are inverses. They do reverse each other. All right. And one other thing I want to point out about inverses, that will come into play in future videos as well, is uh, the looks of their, gra their graphs. So let me go to the let me go to that Desmos website. It's uh, Desmos.com, a free online graphing calculator. And let me go look at the graphs of these two functions, right? These two inverses. Right? We had f of x is equal to you know, one over x plus two, and then g of x was 1 over x, and then after that, minus 2. Right. Now, the graphs of inverses have the same shape. They're actually a reflection across a special line. Now, they're not a reflection across the x-axis or the y-axis. Right? If, I, if I were to take the red graph and reflect it across the x-axis, it would be not the blue graph. All right. Same thing, if I reflected the red graph across the y-axis, it would not be the blue graph. What they are reflections across is the line y equals x. Right. Here's y equals x, and I'm going to make this like a dotted line. And maybe you can see it, I hope you can. If you were to take the points on the red and reflect it across this dotted line, you'd get the points on the blue. All right. So, for instance, um, <clears throat> you know, when x is uh, negative one, look at the red graph. You see negative one one. Oops, sorry, negative one one on the red graph. If you switch x and y, if you reverse it that reflects you across the line y equals x and then you're at the point 1 negative 1. Right, there it is there. Okay, and that works for all the red points. Basically you just switch the x and y. You reverse them. So again you take a point here uh, like I said earlier negative 1 1. I switch the x and y. I reverse the mapping and I land at a point over here 1 negative 1. And that goes for all the points on the red graph. You switch the x and y, that'll reflect you across the line y equals x, this green dotted line here, and take you to a point in the blue. And that is the case for any graphs of inverses. Right? So I'm going to actually write that out for you as a little note. The graphs of inverses
are a reflection. They're a reflection across the line y equals x. All right, and even taking you back to that first example I had up, that little baby example with the three ordered pairs. All right, this picture here where, where I have f and f inverse. If I were to plot these, these ordered pairs on the xy plane, let me do that down here. And I'm going to make a very, very rough sketch here of the xy plane. And I'll even draw in the graph of y equals x. Right, just a very, very rough sketch of it. Right, here's y equals x. I'll do a little dotted line. Right, it's got the point 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Right, there's y equals x. Now if I were to plot all these points, all right, I'll do f in like a pinkish, reddish color. So 1, 5, right, 1, 5. There's a point on the graph of F, right? And then uh, 2, 7, right? 2, 7. There's another point. And then uh, what I have, 3, 6, right? So 3, 6. There's another point, right? So there's the graph of F. Right, in the little pink dots. And what we're going to see is the graph of F inverse, which I'll do in like a bluish color, is these three points reflected across the line y equals x. You know, just the x's and y switch. So instead of 1, 5, you have 5, 1. Come on, right, there we go. All right, you got 5, 1. And instead of 2, 7, you'd have 7, 2. Right? 7, 2 is a point on the, on the graph of F inverse. And instead of 3, 6, you'd have 6, 3. All right, 6, 3. And here's the graph of F inverse. And maybe you see it, maybe you don't. But this, see if I look at the line y equals x, make it go straight up and down. You can see, hopefully you can see the reflection uh, across that line. Right? Um, and if you were to take any point, now again this is a hand drawing, it's not perfect looking, but basically if you were to go off from a point on F, you know, go straight to the line Y equals X, like perpendicular to it, and then the same distance across, you land on a point on the F inverse. All right? So same here, 2, 7, go to line Y equals X, go the same distance across, you're at 7, 2. Uh, you know, 3, 6, go to the y, go to the line y equals x, go the same distance across here at 6, 3. All right. And again, this is a hand drawing. It's very, very rough, very bad. But I'm trying to point out that this is always happening when you have inverses. All right. The graphs of inverses are a reflection across the line y equals x. All right. And I'll, uh, I'll show that to you with the rest of the examples if we come across inverses. Right? Some of these may not be inverses. Just be, be aware of that. All right. Okay. All right, so example two. Again, we're asked to verify whether or not these are, these are inverses. All right. So does F reverse G and does G reverse F? So once again, the first check is take F compose with G. All right, does F reverse G? And hopefully we just get X again. All right, if we get just X again when we're done composing, then F reverses G. It takes it right back to where you started from. So this would be F of G of X, which is the cube root of X plus 4. And then I pop the cube root of x plus 4 in for x in the f rule. Right, so that'll be the cube root of x plus 4 cubed and then minus 4. Well, the cube root of something cubed, the cube, the cube and cube root cancel, you're just left with x plus 4 there. And then minus 4 gives you just, just x. Excellent. So 
I input x, the output's x, uh, that tells me that f reverses g. Okay, but you also have to check the other way around. Does g also reverse f? So take g composed with f and see if we get just x back at the end. All right, so this is going to be g of f, right? So g of x cubed minus 4. And this is the cube root of, instead of x plus 4, I'm plugging in x cubed minus 4 for x, right? x cubed minus 4 plus 4. So we have the cube root of x cubed now, and that's simply just x. Great, All right? So g reverses f as well. So they are inverses, right? So f and g are inverses. Oops. There's a V in there, sorry. And great, I'll circle that, be like, all right, we, we verified it. And again, if you want to start plugging in some numbers, check it out, you know, F of G of 1 should be 1. G of F of 5 should be 5, right? You know, they, they, they undo each other, they reverse each other. Um, so you, again, you could say that f is g inverse, or you could say that g is f inverse, right? But they are inverses of one another. And let's take a look at their graphs. All right, so again, back here. So this uh, you know, f of x given to us was x cubed plus 4. And g of x was the cube root. Well, instead of a cube root, I'm going to go, you know, x plus 4 to the one-third power, right? That's the same as the cube root. Oops, sorry, it was x, my, x cubed minus 4. I was like, those don't look like reflections, right? So, because I messed up. It's x cubed minus 4 for f. And then there we go. Th these look a lot better. This looks much more like there's a reflection across the green dotted line, right? A reflection across y equals x. And look at this, right? You know, I'm on the red graph. You see 1.587 comma 0 is on the red graph. Just switch that. Reverse it. Make it, you know, on the blue graph, you should have 0 comma 1.587, see? Uh, the point on the line y equals x is on both of them. Uh, here you see negative 4, 0. And then on this graph, you see 0, negative 4, right? Uh, just all the points have the x and y coordinates reversed, switch, switched up, however you want to say that, and their graphs are a reflection across the line y equals x. Great. Alright, so the next example, same thing, same thing. I'm asked to, you know, verify whether or not these functions are inverses. So here f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals one-third times x. All right, so one's a cubic function, the other's a linear. Uh, I'll tell you right now, remember I said this earlier, their graphs should have similar shapes. Let me show you, before I even do the verifying and saying that these are not inverses, we can see that they're not inverses from the graphs. Watch this. So f of x was x cubed and then g of x was, you know, one-third times x. And look at these two graphs. Does the blue graph look like a reflection of the red graph across the, the green dotted line, right across the line y equals x? Absolutely not. Um, in fact, you know, like this line here, you know, this graph has the point 6, 2 on it, right? This has the point, you know, 6, 2 on it, but the red graph doesn't have 2, 6. Right? It has 2, it has 2, 2, 8, actually. If I zoom up a little bit. It has 2, 8, not 2, 6. And this doesn't have 8, 2. You know, this has 8, 8 thirds. You know, whatever. 8 and 2, 2 and 2 thirds. So the they're not reflections across the line y equals x. They're not the same graph with the x's and y switched. So right, even from the graphs, I can tell that they are not inverses of one another. 
but we can very easily verify that they're not inverses. Do F compose with G. All right, and see if we get just X back. Right? Input X, if they're inverses, I should get output X as well. Well, this is just F of, and then G of X is one third X. Right, and so I'm putting one third X into F, getting one third X cubed, which is one twenty seventh x cubed, right? This is not x. So f does not reverse g, right? In all instances. Uh, so I don't I don't need to check the other order. I don't need to do g composed with f. I can tell you right now f and g are not inverses. I'll circle that. And again, you could tell from the graphs. All right, the graphs of these two functions are not a reflection across the line y equals x. Right, and uh, you know, you can tell also with some numbers. You know, f of g of one wouldn't be one; it would be one twenty seventh. You know. Now it would work for zero. F of g of zero would be zero, but it doesn't work all the time, right? And in order for them to be inverses, it needs to work all the time. They need to reverse each other all the time. Okay. Great. All right. Then I just got one more example here. I'm hoping you're getting this. So again, we have these two functions, two rational functions, as to verify whether or not they're, they are inverses. So once again, before I actually do the, the compositions, let's take a look at their graphs and see. All right, so we're given f of x equals x divided by 2 plus x. All right, so there's that graph there. And then g of x is 2x divided by 1 minus x. Now it looks to me that they are a reflection across the line y equals x. It looks pretty good, uh, in my opinion. Right. Uh, so, like for instance, you know, here's negative three, negative three three should be on this graph. There it is. See, negative three three is on the red graph. If I switch those. 3, negative 3 should be on the blue graph, and that's this point down here reflected across. Uh, get to 3, negative 3. I saw it there for a second. Yeah, it's there. All right, 3, negative 3. I saw it flash at me for a second. Um, but yeah, it looks like all these points here on the red arch up here, the red part of the graph, when I reflect across the line y equals x, give me this blue piece of the, this blue graph, part of the blue graph down here. And then this part of the blue reflected across y equals x gives me this part of the red. So it looks like they're inverses, but they could be a little off, you know. Your eyes can deceive you. They might be a little off. So although it looks like they're inverses, they may not be, but you know, chances are they are. But let's actually verify it, right, you know, uh, with the composition. So first, you know, does F reverse G? All right, so F composed with G. So it's going to be F of 2X over 1 minus X. So I'm replacing the X's here with this. So instead of X in the numerator, I have this 2X over 1 minus X. Then a big, you know, then the big bar, then over 2 plus, and then 2X over 1 minus X. And let's simplify this, see if we get just x back. Now it's a complex fraction, and I can pretty easily simplify it by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 minus x. And I'll have to distribute down here. So in the numerator, that's just 2x, right? The 1 minus x's would cancel. Denominator, 2 times 1 minus x would be 2 minus 2x, right? And then plus 2x. So I just have 2 in the denominator. This is just 2x over 2, which is just x. Great. That's all. That's what I wanted. 
So we're seeing from this that f reverses g. But does it work the other way around? Does g reverse f? So I have to check the other way, g composed with f, or g of, you know, x over 2 plus x. So I'm just plugging f into g, and it says to be 2 times, instead of x, it'll be x over 2 plus x over, and then 1 minus x over 2 plus x. Then again, I have a nice complex fraction here that I can very pretty easily simplify by multiplying the top and bottom by 2 plus x. And down here I'll have to distribute because there are multiple terms. In the numerator, there would just be 2x. In the denominator, there would be you know 2 plus x uh, minus x, so just 2. So again, I have 2x over 2, or just x. Great. That's what I wanted. So it looks like, from according to this, that you know, g reverses f. Wonderful. So they are inverses, right? So f and g are inverse functions, right? are inverses. Great. And once again, that means you could say that f is g inverse, right? or you could say that g is f inverse. Right. Same thing. And you saw from their graphs, right, you know, if they, they are inverses, so their graphs should be just a reflection across the line y equals x, which it looks like from this picture here, as I showed you earlier. Yeah, wonderful. And that's all I've got for you today. Um, Hopefully, watching me go through these four examples here helps you out when you're asked to verify that two functions are inverses on your own. And thank you very much for watching.